Hello and welcome to another episode of Modern Infrastructure Wednesday. I'm your host, Lee Zen. Today I'm joined by our special guest, Dustin Ferris. He's an engineering consultant in higher education, and he's going to be talking to us about testing infrastructure as code. Dustin, welcome to the show. Thanks, Lee. It's great to be here. And I understand you're a super user of Pulumi in your daily job. Uh, maybe you could talk to us a little bit about what you guys do with Pulumi. Um, yeah, sure. So we use Plumi a lot. Plumi is our infrastructure as code solution. Um, we use Plumi to stand up data lake infrastructure where uh, we have various Amazon resources that bring in data from across the university, um, centralize it, run some ETL, and then make that available to other services and other analysts and departments that need that data for their own uses. Awesome. And I guess we have some of the code here today that's kind of representative of your actual code. Maybe we can uh, jump into some of this and see if what's going on. Yeah, sure. So um, one of the most critical uh, aspects of a data lake is the security of it, especially in higher ed. Um, there's a lot of sensitive data that you want to make sure that you're protecting. So we take security very seriously. It's something that uh, we're constantly thinking about. And we use Pulumi uh, to stand up infrastructure um, that is just dedicated for just that goal. Um, on the left here is some sample infrastructure that uses Pulumi to stand up a Lambda um, that brings in data from AWS config. And for anyone who's not familiar with AWS config, it gives you kind of a report on all the Amazon resources that you have in your account. And then there's another Lambda here that hits the Pulumi API and brings in information about our stack which has all the resources that Pulumi thinks are in our account. And then we kick off a Spark job that compares those two data sets and lets us know if there's anything that's in our account that Pulumi's not aware of. And you know, we get a report that we can look at and analyze and audit to see if you know there's something we need to look into. Maybe a developer spun up a resource and forgot to tear it down without using Pulumi. Or you know, maybe there's a security concern that we need to look into. That's awesome. I love that there's like a very meta aspect of using Pulumi to audit to make sure that all your yeah. resources are managed by Pulumi. Um, yeah, that's right. And so I assume, you know, obviously the 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 correctness of this code is super critical as well. Um, and so you do a lot of testing for this. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, like I said, I can't I can't overemphasize how important security is to us. And part of that means writing unit tests to make sure that our policies and our roles and everything else is configured the way we think it's the way we think it's configured and stays that way. Um, so we have a whole you know a load of unit tests, um, near 100% code coverage, to make sure that everything that we've instantiated in Pulumi is configured the way we think it is. That's awesome. That's awesome. That's super impressive. Um, if you don't mind, could you walk us through just the kind of how it, how the testing is set up? Sure. So um, a little bit of history. Uh, when we first got started, um, we were unit testing by pulling in resources and then using a, a sign-on in Node.js to mock various things. Um, that became kind of problematic uh, because in order to do that, we had to like constantly reload um, the uh, Node modules, um, which could be time consuming. So our test suite took a while. Um, with the recent release of Pulumi, Pulumi 2.0, there's now the ability to mock resources baked right into Pulumi. And using that, um, we're able to actually mock out the things we need to, uh, and it's really quick. Uh, let me just show you this test setup file. So this is an example of how we use the new set mocks feature. Uh, and what, what this is doing for us, it allows us to take any resource that gets instantiated in Pulumi uh, set up a callback that sort of intercepts the inputs that come in and we can sort of set up uh, a, a, an output, a set of outputs for that resource. And this is obviously all in test mode. And that allows us to mock things like the ARN, things that would normally be given to us uh, at runtime by the provider that we don't have available to us when we're testing. Uh, this allows us to sort of step in and insert some mock values. So for instance, here on line 14, you can see that whenever a new resource is, a new resource is uh, created, um, we're giving it an ARN, which is set to the value of the thing's name dash ARN. So obviously this isn't what the real ARN would be, 
but this is something that we can know in advance and we can assert against when we write our unit tests. Awesome. And so this helped you test a lot faster, I assume. Oh yeah. Like I said before, in order to do this, we were using sign-on to mock the ARN of various resources whenever an ARN was needed for a unit test. And in order to have that mock put in place before the resource is instantiated, we had to put the mock in place and then sort of reload the module. And we had to do that for like every test. Um, and we have hundreds of them. Uh, and that ended up in a runtime, you know, upwards of 20 minutes or more, depending on like what machine we're running it on. Um, when we switched over to this new feature, the set mox feature, um, that reduced our runtime from like 15 to 20 minutes down to like 15 to 30 seconds. Wow, amazing. Cool. Um, and obviously, you know, for this show, we're not going to have the time to go through all the tests, uh, but maybe we could walk through maybe writing a couple tests. Yeah, sure. Uh, like I said, um, this sample code you see here sort of simulates um, what I referred to earlier, architecture that uh, compares AWS config data with our Pulumi stack information and lets us know if there's any outlier resources. And as part of this, um, there's a Lambda role and policy um, that's already been written here. There's a Lambda role um, that, you know, that the Lambda uses when it's invoked uh, and when it executes. And then there's a policy um, for that role, um, you know, that allows that Lambda to do the things it needs to do uh, to get the data from Pulumi. So I've got a role, I've got a policy. What's missing here is an attachment. I need to attach the policy to the role. That's, a, that's an AWS uh, notion. Whenever you have a role and policy, you put the two together via a, uh, an attachment. So for test-driven development, what I might do is open up a spec file, which I've got, you know, I've kind of got an empty one here and describe the thing that I want to test, the thing that I want to create. So what I want to add to this uh, infrastructure code is an attachment. And what should that attachment do? Well, it should attach uh, the Lambda policy and it should, um, you know, it should attach to, uh, it should attach to the, the Lambda role. So it attaches the policy and attaches to the role. And uh, if I, if I run this, using Mocha, which is a common Node.js uh, testing library. Um, you can see I've got two pending tests here. And this is kind of like a to-do list for me now. Uh, so I know the two things that this attachment needs to do. And in my watcher over here, I can see uh, what's still pending. And now I can start to fill in some of these tests. And for attaching the Lambda policy, really I just need to assert that the uh, that the lambda's policy ARN is equal to the lambda policies ARN, and to to get these values, I need to actually get at those outputs. So I'm gonna wrap both of these like so. So that's like a helper function you've you've written, I guess. Right. So. This get output function, you can see I'm importing it from test helpers here. Um, that's a helper that takes a Pulumi resources output and kind of converts it into a promise, which allows me to await it here in this uh, async test. So it's nothing super fancy, uh, just allows me to do this equality assertion. Cool. Uh, so you can see I've got two, uh, I've got two compiler errors here in my editor. Uh, and that's because I haven't actually imported these yet. So I can import uh, attachment and the Lambda policy from the Pulumi extract module. Okay, and I can save that. And now I'm gonna get another compiler error because I don't actually have um, attachment defined yet. And you can see over here, Mocha, the Mocha watcher is blowing up because I, I saved that and Mocha reloaded and. I'm getting that compiler over here as well. That attachment isn't defined. Um, so I can fix that. I can go back into the, uh, the implementation here and I can export um, the attachment 
And just for kicks, I'm going to just set it to just kind of a random string here just to see, just to kind of show what happens. I want to reboot my Mocha Watcher. And you can see I'm getting another compiler. And this is saying that the property policy ARN does not exist on the type of string. And this is another way that Plumi helps us uh, be productive, um, not just by the ability to do test-driven development, but because we can use a type-safe language like TypeScript, I know right away when things aren't put together quite right. So I'm getting this, uh, I'm getting this type error, you know, policy error doesn't, well, that's because I don't have this, I don't have, I'm not using the right type here. I can fix that by saying this is actually a, an IAM role policy attachment. And I'll just give that a name. This is for my Lambda role policy attachment. And again, you know, being able to use a type safe language is great. Right here in my editor, I already know that I have required arguments for the second argument. This must be a, a type that has policy ARN and role. So I know right away what arguments I need to provide for a role policy attachment. I need a policy ARN, you know, and I need a role. Uh, okay, so I've defined this. Um, this is, you know, passing the type checker because uh, I have the required arguments. You can see I, don't, I haven't actually put any values yet, mm -hmm. but as far as uh, the compiler is concerned, you know, that's fine. Um, you can see now I've, you know, I've eliminated all my compile errors in my test as well. So I'm going to go ahead and reboot uh, the Mocha Watcher here. Yeah, I can. While that's rebooting, I can see how this is totally the, the kind of test that's super critical for this kind of infrastructure. You want to make sure that you know you, this role doesn't have the wrong policy or the, the the set of permissions it shouldn't have. Exactly. Yeah, it's like we said before. I mean, we take security very seriously, and this policy, this attachment. You know, if this attachment was putting the wrong policy that was maybe too permissive onto this role, there's a potential for this lambda to be able to do things and access data that it's not supposed to be. It's not supposed to see. Um, yeah, so it, it's just critical that we have this good unit test coverage. Um, so you can see that I've got this failing test now. Um, and that's because, you know, my policy ARN is not equal to um, the Lambda policies ARN. And what I want to call attention to on the right here in the output, you know, my expected and actual, um, I'm expecting this, my actual was this bogus string that I put in. and this lambda dash policy dash ARN, that's coming from the Plumi resource monitor mocking feature that I showed earlier, where I was able to mock the ARN of any resource by just providing a mock value of its name dash ARN. So this is how I'm able to write a unit test against something that would normally only be available after this was applied. Um, so again, uh, we've got a failing test here. We can go ahead and fix that. So we're going to set this policy ARN to be uh, the actual Lambda policies ARN. And now you can see I've got one passing test and one pending test. And then just real quickly, we'll go ahead and, and put in this other guy um, that it attaches to the Lambda role. This is, we can just copy and paste this. Uh, this is going to be the, the role and we want it to be equal to the Lambda uh, role, the lender role's name is how this Can I assume you want the function to be uh, async? Uh, that's right, thanks. Okay, so um, again, I'm getting a compiler because I haven't imported the lander role, so I'll go ahead and fix that. Uh, no more compilers, but it is a failing test because the expected name, Pulumi extract lambda role, is not equal to this empty string value I've got up here. I can fix that by just putting in the lambda role name. And I've got two passing tests. I've got a successfully implemented uh, attachment. And that can go into our test suite and be checked every time new code is committed to this repository. That's awesome. That's so great. And yeah, so I guess in the future, as you make changes, you'll always know that this is working the way you expect it to. Exactly. And because 
it's so fast now. I mean, you can see, you know, two milliseconds, three milliseconds. I mean, the whole, you know, we've got hundreds of these and they run, you know, in, in like, you know, 10 to 20 seconds, you know, developers are not, um, you know, developers are encouraged to write these because they're so fast. Like they're easy to write. They actually help you write good code by, you know, engaging in test driven development in this way. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for joining us on the show, Dustin. Thanks so much for your, for walking us through all this. This was great. Uh, hopefully, people who are watching at home, you too can check out the testing features in Pulumi uh, and uh, get all your code uh, tested the way that, uh, that Dustin is. Great. Thanks a lot, Lee. Thanks so much. And uh, please like, subscribe, uh, and uh, continue following Pulumi on Twitter. And we'll see you next time on Modern Infrastructure Wednesday. Thanks very much.